Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlig with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series and is intended to aid the Dreamcast and gaming community. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and uh, so I have this special device here in front of me I'm going to talk about, and I know a lot of you are really interested in it, and you don't want to hear my preamble, so if that's the case, feel free to skip to this time code, and you can just see the device itself and all the great details. Otherwise, okay, thank you for still being here. So, I got a package recently from Turkey. But I'm an idiot. I went and I uh, I got eye surgery. I had laser corrective surgery, so I came back home. I was on Valium, so I was a little fucked up. And uh, I saw this package, and I was like, "Ooh, package!" And I fucking opened it without realizing, moron, you needed to film a video on that of you opening it. So unfortunately, I can't show the process of opening it. My bad. But I'll show you what was inside. Uh, one th thing that was in there is a SCART cable. This has absolutely nothing to do with this device. It's just that the guys, the Bahar Bros, the people who sent this to me, really cool. They sent this to me because, well, SCART cables over there, easy to get. Over here, not easy to get. I often need them because, you know, I use, I use RGB SCART for a lot of things, and these are really high-grade ones. They also threw in a bottle of Sorel, which um, is... <laughs> Chocolate hazelnut spread, kind of like Nutella, but chocolate hazelnut spread comes from Turkey like originally, so this is like the real shit. Um, Nutella is like the McDonald's equivalent. This shit is fucking amazing. So I just want to thank them for doing that. Um, and on top of that, I want to thank them for giving me this. Full disclosure, they gave this to me. They sent this to me absolutely for free. Um, and not only do I want to thank them for you know these two things plus this and just the coolness of doing that, but I also want to thank them for basically the honor of it. Uh, if you guys know anything about this, you don't know anything about this. At the time I make this video, this thing was just publicly announced a few days ago. Now they sent me an email about this thing months ago saying, hey, we're working on this thing and we'd love for you to make a video about it. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'll make a video about that. Are you kidding me? What I didn't expect was that they were going to give it to me essentially a month early. So at the time the pre-orders had been announced, I now have it. And I'm going to make a video on it, reviewing it, so that you guys can be sure if you want it or not. And I just want to thank them for the opportunity. I want to thank you guys for caring enough to watch, too. So if you're interested, in the description, there's a link to their website so you can get all the information. It's $85, and that's shipped worldwide. It's up to you to determine whether or not you think it's worth it, but I'm going to tell you everything I thought about it. So uh, what is this thing, in short? Uh, well, in short, it is a uh, HDMI device for your fucking Dreamcast. <laughs> How awesome is that? Now, the Bahar Bros have a history of making all sorts of Dreamcast peripherals, most notably VGA boxes, which are basically little boxes. You plug them in your Dreamcast, and you can get the best video quality on them. They're always made really well. They have all sorts of additional features, bells and whistles, and uh, they're so much better than those piece of shit white Tomy cables that I facepalm every time someone buys them or brings them up in the comments sections. Like, yeah, but I thought about getting this because it was $15 on Amazon. Oh, God, you don't know. You shouldn't be buying that shit. It's low-grade crap with no additional features, compatibility problems, and a short-ass lifespan. Don't buy those. And, a, you know, a pox on anyone who actually recommends those. Ugh. But anyway, and you can see it, like, every one of my videos, there's always some person who brings it up, and then eventually they, like, not always, but there is usually someone who comes back and be like, okay, it was a mistake, they fucking died, like, two weeks later. Don't buy those Tommy cables, I'm begging you, don't buy those. Buy stuff from the Bar Bros. These dudes actually make these themselves, and I swear, their shit is fucking great. And this one, probably the best one, but let's, let's get, we'll get to that in a minute. Now... If, uh, if you're not familiar, if you're like new to this whole thing, like why would I care about what kind of cables I want to hook up to my Dreamcast and all that stuff, well, let me give you a really basic breakdown of how this works. Uh, so the Dreamcast can output multiple types of different uh, video formats using different cables. Um, and each cable can give you better or worse results depending on which one you're using. It supports five options. The first option is RF. Don't, don't use RF. This shit was out of date by the late 80s. Don't, there's no reason in 2017 to even consider using this. Uh, you'd actually have to go out of your way to do it, so don't. Um, the second one would be composite, you know, the yellow one. That's the one that most people know because it's what came with the console. It's what came with most of our consoles. And it's the convenient, easy one. You just plug it in, it works. Yeah, I like it. Um, and I don't blame people for if you're new to this or if you're not you know, super interested, why you would assume that's probably the way to go. But no, composite's bad. And the gross oversimplified reason that that is, is consoles such as the Dreamcast or many of our consoles, in fact, most of your consoles, don't use composite with. There's really no reason to. But, um, but basically, in layman's terms at best, uh, consoles think, they render, an image. there's a pun in there somewhere, but it's thinking. Um, but they render an image, right? The way the console is thinking. 
and it wants to output that type of image. Uh, in this case, it would be RGB through progressive scan, so it would be RGB through 480p. And when it sees that you're connected through composite cables, it goes, oh, fuck, dude, I can't, that shit's not going to run through that. So it goes, okay, fine, and it makes sacrifices. It cuts corners, and it basically has to degrade the image to get it to run through composite. So it, it compresses the video, it compresses the colors, it compresses the contrast, all into this one gross, bloody, worn-out signal, muddy, worn-out signal. Um, so I, I don't recommend composite for any reason ever. Uh, so then the next option is S-Video. Now, S-Video is better than composite, which again, epox uh, co composite is a rough approximation of the image. It's not supposed to look like that. And neither is S-Video, but S-Video is better because at least it separates the colors from the contrast, meaning you get a sharper picture. And in like the 2010s, S-Video got really popular for the Dreamcast because people wanted to start capturing their Dreamcast gameplay for YouTube and stuff. And they knew composite was awful, but the superior options were too hard to capture. So as we got kind of popular because people were like, oh, it's just easier and it's slightly better, so that's how I'll do it. Don't, don't do that either. There's better options. Then there's RGB SCART, a.k.a. this thing. Um, like I said, this thing has nothing to do with this particular box. But unless you're European, you probably don't know what this is. RGB SCART is a type of cable that we never saw in North America. And it's, it's capable of running multiple formats. It can pass a composite signal straight through, even though it looks totally different. It can pass S-Video straight through, even though it looks totally different. But there's another one it can pass through called RGB. We don't have the equivalent of that over here. We never did. But it can pass that through. Now, RGB is great because it's, it basically separates the colors, uh, red, green, and blue, and it separates the contrast, as well as giving you audio. So it's, it's the sharpest and cleanest picture of all those type of formats. But with the Dreamcast, it's mostly pointless. Uh, there's some games that do optimize with it, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, but for the most part, you don't need this when it comes to the Dreamcast. Which then brings us to VGA. Now, VGA is fascinating with the Dreamcast because uh, the Dreamcast natively will run a 480p signal through true RGB, and it looks phenomenal. It's actually kind of remarkable that Sega put it in there in 1998 in Japan, and it's, it's like, wow, how do they think to future-proof it that much? I mean, no, 480p now in 2017 is not much, but the fact that they thought to do that in 1998, almost 20 years ago, is kind of impressive. And I have no evidence of what I'm about to say. I'm just speculating. This just sounds like it makes sense to me. Because VGA is really a format you only see in computer monitors, especially back in the late 90s. So I'm kind of thinking... Again, I have not a single shred of evidence of this. I'm just speculating because it makes sense to me. But what I think must have happened is that at Sega, they were like, look, we're going to get console gamers kind of regardless, so it doesn't really matter how they connect it. But it would be nice if for demoing purposes and to appeal to PC gamers, we had VGA on board. Um, and yes, I'm serious about that. I know how funny that sounds to appeal to, VG, uh, to PC gamers. But if you think about it, if a PC gamer was really into their PC, especially PC gaming was very different in the late 90s, but um, if, if you were to appeal to them, you can say, look, you take the Dreamcast, you just plug it into your monitor, and you can have our VGA box where you plug your computer into our VGA box, and you can have both devices connected to your monitor at the same time. That way you can play your PC games plus all our new Sega exclusives. Come on, you know you want to do it. Plus, here's something you may not know. The console peasants, they're going to have composite. You're going to have high definition. High definition by 1998, 99 standards, but still, my point is, I think that they were just trying to wow them, and I think that was going to be the plan, but of course marketing didn't really seem to go with that. Because otherwise it's hard to explain why the Dreamcast would be capable of 480p and why almost every game would support it, yet it's almost never advertised except occasionally mentioning it on the back of just some games and as like a footnote, it's odd. But anyway, the point is, that image clarity is really nice. And people have since wanted to use it, but it's extremely inconvenient because, as mentioned before, VGA was never really standard with televisions. It was never really put in there. There was a phase there in, like, the 2010s, the 20 aughts, where they were kind of putting it in TVs, and then they stopped. Computer monitors obviously still have it, but most people want to play a home console on a television. So you've had different options. 
Uh, some people just stick with the other cables that they know work, even though they don't get the better image. Uh, some people, you know, have resorted all the way to the extreme of modifying consoles with HDMI boards, which is uh, excessive, po possibly, unless you get additional benefits out of it. Personally, the route I always went was to use things like this. This is a VGA to HDMI scaler. I did a video on this shit back in 2012. Um, the sad thing about this is, this is a really high grade scaler by uh, Atlona. Uh, I believe it originally retailed for like 150 bucks. I think I got mine for like 80, but I don't really remember. It was like, you know, uh, over five years ago. And um, the point of it was, it would take your VGA signal, which again is not the most friendly of formats, and it would detect it, it would read it, and it would output it through HDMI at a different resolution. So in this case, it would detect that it was 480p, and it would output and upscale at 1080p. Not true high definition, but it, was a, it would make it look a little better, and it would upgrade it so that your television could understand it, and it would be more convenient to use. On top of that, as uh, new recording devices for gameplay came in, they would all start supporting HDMI. So if you wanted to record Dreamcast, something like this was really useful. Whereas VGA recording really never became a thing, which is another reason that recording Dreamcast footage has always kind of been a problem for people. Sad thing about this though is that most people did not want to pay something like $150 for a device like this, and frankly, I don't blame you. But uh, so what happened was there was still a demand for it, and people would then basically what happened is there was a flood of these like cheapo Chinese ones that were like 20, 30 bucks. They're not as good. They're just not as good. But most people liked them because they would compare them to composite and they would say, oh, it's so much better. It's kind of like comparing the SCART to HDMI box versus the FrameMeister. The FrameMeister is vastly more expensive, but it's also much better. But when you first look at the, the SCART to HDMI device as opposed to something like composite, you go, holy shit, night and day. I know, I did it myself. Uh, so the point is, stuff like this has existed. But the Bihar Bros, oh, thank you. I think they finally solved this problem for all of us. They gave us this beautiful little device. Um, so in case you can't tell, I, I obviously like it. I've used it for a while now, which is one of the benefits of opening the thing beforehand, isn't it? You actually get to try it before you start talking about it. But um, so let's talk about some of the basics of this thing. Now, uh, first and foremost, the best thing about this right off the bat, even though it has a power supply port on it, it doesn't require it. This actually has no use. Now you have to understand, I have a prototype box, but what they told me is this is exactly the same as the final version, it's just that my PCB board is green, whereas I guess the final ones will be black. Aside from that, it's exactly the same. So this power supply is there, the, the jack for it, but you don't need it. This thing is actually powered by the console. Thank you. No additional power supplies. That's awesome. Now. On top of that, it has multiple switches on the side. Uh, we're going to talk about three of them very quickly and then one I have more to say, so we'll save that for a bit. There's, uh, so going from this side, uh, this one is a scan line generator. Uh, personally, I don't care about scan lines. Uh, scan lines are basically extra lines you can add to the image to kind of simulate the experience of playing on a CRT. I don't get this. It's kind of a nostalgia thing, I think. People, some people love it and they swear by it. It's just not for me. But if you like it, it's there. The second switch is also to adjust the thickness or the position of said scan lines. Again, personally not a feature I care about, but people must love it because all the Bahar Bros boxes have them. Uh, this third switch basically boosts the colors of the, uh, the image. This is something where it's completely optional, and I'm sure people like uh, my buddies over at My Life in Gaming would probably tell you not to use that and to just adjust your television accordingly, but it's there, so that's up to you. Uh, and then the final switch is more complicated, so we're going to get back to that in a second. Now, as far as uh, other technical details, um, the, the output on this thing obviously is HDMI, and it will carry both your video and your audio. You will get digital audio out through the HDMI port plugging directly into this device. But on top of that, as a bonus feature, it has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for um, analog audio out that will allow you to connect it to like a speaker system or headphones if you choose to do so. So that's a nice little bonus feature. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about this switch. Now this last switch uh, basically allows the device to switch between RGB and VGA. And if you're like, what the hell does that mean? Well. Uh, you have to understand that this device is not a scaler. This device is a scaler, meaning it takes that original source image 
and stretches it to different dimensions so that modern devices can understand it. This device in no way, shape, or form does that. It just passes along the original signal. The original signal in the Dreamcast is 480p. Therefore, 480p, straight through. Um, now, most games support it. There's something like 750 games for the Sega Dreamcast worldwide, uh, meaning all the North American stuff, plus all the Japanese exclusives, plus all the European exclusives, plus all the indie releases. Um, and when I say indie releases, I mean things like you know, Redux or Sturmwind. I don't mean things like Beats of Rage. That's a homebrew. That's a different thing. Um, but all total, there's around 750 games. Now, the vast majority of them support uh, VGA mode, which means you'll have absolutely no problems running them with this. But there are 98, and I believe it's exactly 98 games that are, shall we say, problematic. Uh, now, of those games, about half, I believe 48, will work with VGA, but there's an extra step involved. And then the, I believe the other 50 simply will not work. I will actually put a list in the description of this video of every single one of these games that I'm talking about so you can know exactly which ones. But I'll show you an example of what I mean. Right here I have NBA Showtime on NBC. Uh, NBA on NBC, whatever. Uh, this is an example of a game that does support VGA. However, it requires an additional step. If you were to just put this in your Dreamcast with this or any other VGA device, this isn't like a problem with this thing, it's a problem with any VGA device. If you were to put this into a Dreamcast with that in there, you would receive an error message basically saying like you have the wrong AV receiver, this game doesn't support it, or something to that effect. And you would assume, okay, I guess I can't use it with this box. Not true. You can uh, force boot it, is what it's called, into VGA. There's two ways to do that. One is through software, using something like Codebreaker. You know, you just pop this in your Dreamcast. This does support VGA. It'll boot up, and then it'll basically be like, hey, do you want to switch the disc? And you say yes, and then you, you know, put the, new, the uh, NBA game in there, close it, start it, and it'll just run the game as if there's no problems at all. The VGA code is in there, but for whatever reason, it won't natively start with it. I don't know why. Um, but... And on top of using software, this box, that's what the switch is for. You can basically run it in um, RGB mode so that it starts to boot it, and then at the right moment, you just flick the switch into VGA mode, and it'll trick it into continuing onward and actually booting it. Yay, those 48 games suddenly work. However, as mentioned before, there are 50 or so games, I believe it's 50, that will not work no matter what you do. One of them being an example of the King of Fighters Dream Match 1999, North American version right here. Doesn't matter if you use software, doesn't matter if you use this little this, the button trick, this game quite simply will not run in 480p ever, which means it will not work with this device ever. Um, the only possible way you might get it to work is if modders have got the actual game and they've modified it and created a 480p compatible version. That's a different entity. But using a stock copy, that will never happen. Um, so that's worth noting. But again, most of the games aren't really, don't really matter that much, and most of the games are actually Japanese exclusive you've probably never even heard of. So uh, again, there's a list in the description. The only ones that kind of hurt are a lot of the SNK titles, like a couple of the King of Fighters games, Last Blade 2, etc. Uh, but for the most part, what I'm telling you is almost every single game will work with this thing. But games like this is why you would care about RGB. So there you go. Um, now, when it comes to this device, uh, there's only a couple other things I really would like to note. Uh, now, I, when it came to capturing footage for this, I kind of thought it would be a nightmare. I thought my recording software would have a hell of a time with this thing. No problem at all. Really no problem. Plugged it in, connected it, worked immediately. Uh, I was really kind of sure 480p through HDMI would be problematic, and that is something worth noting. Um, even though you might have an HDMI port on your television or your monitor, it doesn't mean it necessarily supports 480p as a resolution. And you might be sitting there thinking, well, no, of course mine does. You know, I played my Nintendo Wii with component cables in 480p, and it works fine on my TV, so my TV supports 480p. Yes, it does through those ports. Believe it or not, depending on your TV, depending on the model, all that shit, um, certain ports can support resolutions that other ports do not. For example, in my case, you know, of course my TV supports 40i through things like, I don't know, any like composite device I want to hook up to the N64 if I were to do that, it would work. But if I were to hook up a 480i HDMI device, the TV freaks out and can't handle it. There's just some resolutions that are so basic that HDMI can't handle them. While I don't imagine you'll actually run into that problem, it is worth noting. Personally, 
every HDMI device I had, I tested this with, they all worked. So it's a vote of confidence, but it's something worth knowing. And I'm very happy to report that the HotPodge HD PVR2 did work perfectly fine with this thing, which I was thrilled by. So when I connected this thing to my setup, the way my setup works is I basically have everything feeding into HDMI switch boxes, automatic ones. So it detects the, the newest or the most frequent or active HDMI device, meaning I turn on a device and it automatically switches to that device, right? So when I plugged in the Dreamcast, I turned it on, my TV, you know, it switched over immediately, it popped on my television, no problem, and it looked fucking great. Super convenient, super easy, I'm super thrilled with it. The only other thing I can really think to note about this that's potentially an issue is, you'll see this Dreamcast here, if you're like, well, that's kind of a weird looking Dreamcast, it's black, it has a spiral. Um, this is a custom made Dreamcast that was made for me by a guy named Justin a few years ago. It's region free, and it has, most notably, an onboard VGA port built in. For years, I've been using this with the HDMI scaler, which was nice because it was almost like having the same thing, except it required a USB-based power supply. Um, problem with this particular device, this console, is it's incompatible with this. And I have to assume that it has something to do with the VGA mod. Um, so Justin, if you even still watch the channel, hi, uh, can you possibly explain why that might be the case? I thought this switch would do something to fix that, but apparently not. So possibly if you have a VGA modded Dreamcast where the VGA port is built on board, you might have issues with this. All right, I decided to show you guys some gameplay here to uh, compare the various different types of formats. You can see the format of choice up in the upper left corner. So for example, this is composite and in a moment it'll switch to S video. And this is a, obviously a cutscene, so this isn't like the best way to compare them all, but you'll get uh, like a stable title card in the minute. Uh, a few other things I wanted to mention. One thing I couldn't believe I didn't mention is that the name of this device is called the Acura or Acura, but I'm pretty sure it's Acura, A-K-U-R-A. Um, it works on all regions of consoles, so you know it works on a, a North American, a European, Japanese console. Doesn't matter. Um, it also here's one thing that might have been kind of confusing. So obviously it plays in 480p through all the VGA compatible games, but um, I, I feel like people are going to inevitably wonder if you keep it in RGB mode for the non-VGA compatible games, can you just play it straight through like through 480i? Unfortunately, no, that doesn't work. Uh, you would still need some sort of like alternative method, usually using RGB SCART, which is why I showed you guys an example of it in there. I also hope you guys appreciate the irony of me picking uh, House of the Dead, a light gun game where you can't really play it back with VGA because uh, even though it supports it, um, TVs, you know, modern monitors and stuff can't understand it with light guns. So it looks beautiful. You just can't really use it this way unless you have like an old CRT that happens to support VGA. Uh, but, or, you know, also I think it was because they did the typing of the dead is the same game and that works. Point is, uh, it is funny how they put VGA compatibility in there, um, even though they never really made that big of a deal about it. But all right, now let's talk a little bit more about, um, well, first of all, like I said, you're seeing the difference in all these different cables and like how improved it can be. You go from composite to S video up to RGB and then up to the beautiful that uh, is VGA through HDMI. Interesting to note that the composite, the S video and the RGB are all running through the frame meister. So they're actually getting the benefits of the frame meister, whereas the VGA is going straight from the uh, Acura box into the recorder and no additional benefits. And it still looks substantially better. That's how improved the, uh, the VGA port is. It, it truly is something special. And I would also like to take a moment to explain the difference between uh, resolution, picture clarity, and graphics, because people always tie these together like they're the same thing. There's inevitably a comment always in videos like this where, I don't care about improving the graphics of my games, I just play the games. While noble, in principle, to just play the games, we're not even talking about graphics. Graphics aren't changing. Graphics are like the character models and stuff like that doesn't change because you use different cables it's not like if i put vga cables you know a 2d character suddenly becomes 3d that's not how that works what happens is you can improve picture clarity now when you go from say we're going to start here with composite you look at composite and it's fuzzy it's blown out Improving picture clarity means you get it's a slightly sharper image then it's a slightly sharper image in rgb with more colors but RGB through VGA is meaning it's uh, it runs in RGB mode, but then on top of that, it has the added benefits of a different resolution. 
So picture clarity can change based on the cables, meaning composite, S-video, and RGB all run at 480i. They just get progressively better with what the clarity is. Then you have the additional benefits of possible uh, resolution upgrades. In the case of the Dreamcast, you have VGA, so you get all the RGB quality plus double the resolution. So that has nothing to do with graphics. It's just an important thing, I think, to understand. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I want to once again thank the Bahar Bros for hooking me up with this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was help helpful to all of you. There's a link in the description to check out the device. Highly recommended by me. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all later.